Welcome back to The Breakfast. Uh, it's time for Today in History, and we get to share with you some of the major um, you know, issues or things that happened today uh, many years ago. On the 4th of March, and I'm looking back at 1999, it was on this day that a couple of people, dozens of people, were released uh, by Abdul Salami Abubakar, who at that time was head of state. Um, one of those people who was released was Oladipo Dia. Um, his full name, Donaldson Oladipo Dia, who was born 4th of uh, April 1944. He was a Nigerian general who served as chief of general staff and was the de facto vice president on the military head of state back then, General Sani Abacha. He previously served as chief of defense staff and was military governor of Ogun State from January 1984 to August 1985. On this day, he was, of course, uh, set free along with 47 other political prisoners um, um, in the, on the 4th of March in 1999. So a quick um, um, you know, recap of what happened back then. In 97, um, Oladipo Dia and other descending, uh, uh, dissident rather, officers in the um, military allegedly planned to overthrow the regime of Sani Abacha. The coup was allegedly also uncovered by forces loyal to Abacha back then, and Dia and his cohorts were jailed. That for his arrest, there was a military tribunal set up in Jos, and Dia and six other people were sentenced to death by firing squad in April 1998. Um, he continued to claim that he was innocent. Uh, there's also the parts where he said that it was uh, Ishaya Bami, who was also um, in the um, uh, government back then and also a military officer in the uh, government back then, who, you know, gave him the idea or sold the idea to him of a coup. But, of course, that story didn't sell. He was eventually pardoned by the late head of uh, state successor, Abdul Salami Abubakar, in 1999. So there's other details to this, you know, the parts where some people believe that the coup was, um, um, or the coup allegation really was um, Abacha's way of trying to do away with uh, Oladipo Dia because at that time he seemed to be gaining a lot of popularity um, in the government. And of course, they had to find ways to, you know, kick him out or do away with him. Um, and when, of course, uh, there, there were two uh, assassination attempts um, at, at Oladipo Dia, one at the airport and then one of them on the street threw bombs that went off, but the, both of them failed. And then, of course, there were speculations that maybe the coup allegation was Abacha's way of doing away with him. Um, also, it, there was also the, the tribal aspects to all of this, you know, seeing that a lot of people who were arrested back then, along with Oladipo Dia, were uh, from the southwest, you know, and, um, you know, the northern officers, of course, you know, weren't, you know, very many in the number of people who were arrested. Um, and, of course, it also shows, you know, the divisions in the army at that time. It seems like there were already tribal uh, divides in the Nigerian army as far back as, you know, in the, the, the late 90s. Uh, some other thing I would also quickly mention is the fact that um, Dia was one of those who, of course, uh, gave the go-ahead for Ken Sarui was... Uh, death sentence and his eventual, you know, um, killing mm -hmm. uh, back then. He was one of the, he was part of the government back then. There's also a video where uh, Dia was uh, two videos actually that leaked where Al Mustafa, who was chief of staff to the president back then, was seen interrogating Dia and asking him questions, you know, about the coup. There's also another video that shows uh, Oladipo Dia when he was crying and begging Sani Abacha back then to spare his life. And uh, there's a part where um, Sani Abacha then gives him, you know, a tissue paper or something to wipe his tears hmm. um, so it, it was it was you know an interesting time in Nigeria's history not interesting in a good way but it was interesting seeing how all of it um, also played out um, hmm. also to quickly note that his second wife passed on um, last year um, Olad Kodia's wife. Okay, fantastic. I, I do have a lot to say about this, but we're running out of time. But I just wanted to quickly mention, uh, away from the Dia story and specifically on Abacha, uh, just recalling his time, you know, in the seat of power in Nigeria and just how much, even many years after his death, we're still seeing the results of his corruption, basically, Nigeria. As far back or as, as, as far back as 2019, yeah. we saw that authorities in the United States recovered about $267 million that Abacha, Abacha had looted many years ago. You know, there was always the human rights angle, how he, he incarcerated so many popular Nigerian figures, Olusego Basanjo, Ken Sarariwa, Olusho Inka, and so many other notable personalities. But uh, good to know that uh, eventually uh, this whole came to an end. Nigeria eventually transited 
to their yeah. democratic rule. Yeah. People, and people, people will always refer to the god of Aladipodia, you know, of course, um, because he, he definitely or very likely would have been killed. Um, if Abacha right. didn't pass on. It's also Abacha's wife's birthday today. Okay. I quickly mention happy birthday to Miriam Abacha. <laughs> okay, let's uh, go out to the shores of Nigeria now, back into 2005 to talk this day in history, um, March 4th. This day in history was when Martha Stewart was released from prison. Now, Martha Stewart is a uh, American billionaire who started out as a small home-based catering business. Uh, she founded her, a catering business with her partner and uh, she eventually grew. Uh, she used to cater to events. She catered to one event. This was like the turnaround in her life history. She catered to an event of a book launch and she eventually got to speak with uh, one of the publishers at that event and uh, you know she spoke about writing a book, publishing a book about the recipes she uses in her catering events. She went on to publish the books and she began to grow a very successful uh, you know, um, empire. So what happened was uh, she served five months in prison for lying about the sale of Imclone stock in 2001. And what happened was on December 21st, 2001, uh, she sold about 4,000 shares of that Imclone systems it was run by her friend uh, that uh, develops a cancer therapy drug. And the next day, the company's stock tanked after news broke that Imcon's newest cancer drug had been rejected by the FDA. And uh, she was arrested on charges of insider trading. She was sentenced to about seven years in prison, but she denied any knowledge of, you know, insider, insider knowledge and uh, that the stock, was, the stock was sold based on previously made agreement with her stockbroker. She was later sentenced to five years, five months in prison and another five months on the house arrest. And uh, I think one of the great things is that after she was released from prison, March 4, 2005, Martha Stewart didn't stop there. She went on to continue to make her name and her mark in the world of entertainment, entrepreneurship, and hospitality. I mean, taking a look at her Twitter page now, you can see just how much comeback Martha Stewart has made. She's She's done a lot when it comes to uh, her cooking show. She's featured on The Apprentice in America. She's collaborating with lots of American brands. And she basically is the definition of someone who bounces back from challenges. So this thing in history, she was released from yeah, prison. She's uh, phenomenal. She is, you know, you know, they might call her, you know, a small legend. Um, um, you know, some people think that she's overhyped. You know, there's also a time that was a controversy over um, the lady in How to Get Away with Murder now, um, don't remember her name, the black lady, uh, where they said, oh, she's the black Martha Stewart. And she, she always used to say, no, I'm not the black Martha Stewart. I am me. You know, I am who I am. But anyway, um, that's, a, you know, a little bit of uh, Martha Stewart's story from 2013. Or what year was that? 2005. 2005. Okay. And of course, uh, um, Oladipo Dia. Um, the reason, of course, he is called Oladipo Dia is because he was um, ordered after he was released. He was stripped of his military um, um, titles and everything that he had to do with the military. Um, and so he now doesn't bear any military, you know, um, um, nomenclature, simply Oladipo Dia. Um, on this day, he was set free in 1999 by Abdul Islami Abu Bakr. That's all we have for you today in history. We're taking a short break. When we come back, straight into our first major conversation for today, the northern blockade you know, that has officially been lifted now, eventually been lifted, uh, we're getting into a conversation about that, what it truly means, and if there are other underlying aspects of it that we must uncover here. Stay with us. <laughs> 